All right, in today's video, I want to do a hack on my inverter. Uh, this is an inverter from Reliable. Now, a lot of inverter companies, they'll charge an extra like 50 or $100 just to add in a remote on-off switch. So I'm gonna add my own in here for right around $3. So all I need to do is open up this inverter, tap into the battery positive and negative, and then create a bridge on the on-off switch. And then that way, I will be able to turn on and off the inverter remotely. Now for this here, uh, all you need is this little device here. This is off AliExpress. And all this is, is basically just a wireless relay. So this is the relay here. This one here can do up to 10 amps. So you don't want to exceed anything over 10 amps. And then you can see your connections here. So here on the back, you can see we have our ground our positive, our normally open, our common port, and our normally closed. So I need to tap into our normally closed and the common, and then that way when this is triggered on, it'll bridge a connection, which will trick the unit into thinking that it has been powered on. And these are our screw terminals in order to put the wiring in. This is all gonna sit inside of this case, and then I will be able to turn it on and off with the fob here. So this will be our on and this will be our off. So first thing we're going to want to do is open up the inverter. And to open up the inverter there's just some Phillips screws on the top and two on the side. Now you want to make sure that when you open this up that you are not connected to a battery and also it would probably be a smart idea to wait a few minutes just for the capacitors to bleed off any excess energy because those capacitors can hold a charge. Okay, and we'll open it up. Okay, now what you could see here is we have our battery positive and negative connections over here. And then on this side here, and you can see down on this side, these two leads here are for the switch on the outside of the inverter. So all I should have to do is tap my positive and negative in here and then run this connection off of the relay. Okay, now to make my connection, I just simply have some wire here, it has some extra sheathing, so I'm gonna use this one. All I'm gonna do is to pre-tin my positive and negative and then I'm just going to solder it directly to the bars here for the positive and negative. So you will need to be able to do a little bit of soldering to achieve this. So I'm going to pre-tin my wires. And all that means is that I'm going to be putting some solder onto the wire first, just to make it easier. Okay, I've got this wire pre-tinned. Now I'm going to try and get a little bit of solder onto this copper. Okay, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shave a bit of, of one of these wires and then solder to the wire instead of the terminal. Terminal is going to be too hard to heat up. It's such a thick piece of metal. So I'm just going to shave back one of these wires here. There you go, you could see I got the metal showing here, so now I should be able to solder to it. Okay, and so now giving the wire a good tug, we are soldered. I will put another zip tie and try and cover this with electrical tape as soon as I finish the negative. Now I can cover up my connection with some electrical tape. So now I've tapped in to the positive and the negative. I'm going to add my own zip tie just to keep everything together. Okay, now for the placement of the device. 
Uh, there's not very much room in here anywhere to place this. I think for this device, what I'm going to do is actually put it onto the top of the case. Once the case is put down, I'm going to have it centered somewhere around this area on the case. So I'm going to cut my wire down. Okay, and now I need to solder my two wires off of these posts, which shouldn't be too hard because they already have solder on them. So I just need to get a wire and pre-tin it and it should connect easily. Okay, there's one. Now I've got my switch hooked up. Okay, now if I connect these two wires, these positive and negative, or red and black, I should say, this inverter will turn on if there was 12 volt power onto it, because that's all the switch does is connect those two connections here. So all I'm doing is using the relay to make that connection. Okay, so now I'm ready to make my connection. And what I want to connect to is the ground and positive off the 12 volt battery, and then the normally open and the COM port. So that's going to be negative, positive, and then my switching right here on the on these two. And this last one will do nothing. Now, ideally, you'd want to use a ferro for these connections, but I have to get it in this little box. So there's not enough room for that. So I'm going to make my connections and then I'll show you. Okay, I have all my connections made there. So now I should be able to put 12 volts on here. And then we will try out the key fob. I'm just going to turn this around. Okay, so now if I turn this on. Okay, and as you can see, the inverter is on right now. So now if I turn this off and get the key fob. Well, I guess I have to press the learn button. Okay. And there we go. So I just had to push the button three times in order to set the relay to come on and stay on. And then when I press the B, it turns off. So now what this is gonna allow me to do is if I have this inverter mounted in a place where I can't get to it, and I wanna turn the power on and off to save power, I can easily just hit the key fob and now it's on. And then when I hit the key fob again on the B, now it's off. So I'm going to put this into its case uh, and then I'm going to mount it to the top here. Okay, now all I need to do is, this is just some double-sided sticky. This is for the GoPro. So it is really good adhesive. So I'm actually going to use this to mount to the top. Okay, now that I'm done all my soldering, all my wiring, my case is put back together. Uh, let's hook this up to some power. And you can see now that I have a remote power setting to this inverter. Now this switch here doesn't make a difference if I turn it on or off. If the remote switch is off, I can still turn this on just by pressing the button on the inverter. 
And now if I turn this on or off, it doesn't make a difference. But if the button is turned off and I press the button on the remote, uh, it will fire on remotely. So now what this is gonna allow me to do is I can mount this in a cabinet or a faraway place and just have to have enough reach for this key fob. And then that way what I can do is save power. So if I was to go out or anything like that, I can just turn off the inverter and I'm not wasting electricity on standby consumption with the inverter. And then when I come back, I can just hit the button on and then I will have power again. So pretty easy, pretty neat little modification. I uh, just had an idea, thought I would share it with you guys. So like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.